Alleluia. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. It is uh, our night for closing chapel to put an end to the academic year that has been 2019-2020. Our theme for this academic year has been glow, God's light, our witness. And so as we assemble tonight for our closing chapel, for our graduation, for our eighth graders, and uh, for our awards night to wrap up this school year, we remember that we are called to be God's children and lights in the world around us. God's light is our witness. So we begin with our worship this evening. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Jesus said, whoever follows me will have the light of life. Let my light shine bright for God's glory. For those lost in the darkness of sin, our peace shows God's forgiveness. God's light, our witness. For those who are unaware of the light, our acts of goodness show God's presence, God's light, our witness. For those who are sick and hurting, our kindness shows God's love, God's light, our witness. For those who are lonely, our friendliness shows that God is with all, God's light, our witness. For those who are sad, our presence shows that God overcomes our sorrow. God's light, our witness. If we say we have fellowship with God, while well, we walk in darkness, we lie and do not practice the truth. But if we walk in the light, as he is in the light, we have fellowship with one another, and the blood of Jesus, his son, cleanses us from all sin. Almighty God in his mercy has sent his son Jesus to be the light of the world. His light has destroyed the darkness of sin and now we live as children of the light shining his light for the world to see. Jesus said, whoever follows me will have the light of life. Let my light shine bright for God's glory. 
Our Bible reading from Matthew chapter 5, Jesus said, You are the light of the world. A city set on a hill cannot be hidden. Nor do people light a lamp and put it under a basket, but on a stand, and it gives light to all in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before others, so that they may see your good works and give glory to your Father who is in heaven. Grace, mercy, and peace from our God and Father and our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Thinking about our verse for this year, let your light shine before others, that they may see your good works and praise or give glory to your Father who is in heaven. God's light, our witness. As you listen to that verse, it kind of sounds like God wants us as Christians to stand out. He wants us to be seen. He wants us to be visible, to be evident, not just as people, but as Christians in the world around us. And I want to tell you something that I have experienced in all of my years of being a pastor, and especially here at St. John too. Every year in the fall, you may know, I go out and I referee football games, and sometimes I even get called upon to do like a JV game or a ninth grade freshman game and here in Battle Creek. And what's always amazing is when it comes time for the coin toss, there is almost always, almost every single time, a St. John graduate is one of the captains. I love that. I love that. When you watch some of our other things that go on from the high school, whether they're other sports teams or performances or various other things, you almost always see a St. John graduate kind of standing up front, leading. Do you know why? Because you are trained to be leaders. You have been set apart through being taught not only your reading and your writing and all of those other subjects, but being taught the love of God. You have been taught to stand out, be confident, to be bold because of who God has created you to be and what God has done for you and in you. And as our eighth graders go on to high school next year, they're going to go on and hopefully glow. I don't mean they're going to be radioactive. I don't mean that, you know, we've exposed them to something that's going to make their skin glow in the dark when they go to high school, but they have certainly been exposed to something that I really hope glows in them. I also hope it glows in our seventh graders next year when they are eighth graders and leaders at our school, and I hope it glows in every single student who has been through this school year. And then when we see you again in the fall, you come back glowing. Not from a sunburn, spending too much time outside over the summer, but glowing, letting God's light be your witness shining through you. I think of it kind of like this. Sometimes we are really tempted to be quiet and shy and nobody can see us. I bet you can't read that, can you? It's tough to read that pencil from this distance and over that camera. So, of course, let's try something different. Let's try writing with pen. Let's try a pen. Can you see it yet? Probably not. You see, it just doesn't stand out yet. It's not visible for us. Well, I got a small marker here. This is one of them little felt-tipped kind of markers. Um, And let's try that. It might be bright enough. You can see it. Just a little bit darker. Can you quite make out the words yet? I don't think you can. Well, I got a Sharpie. Surely that will show up. Surely with a Sharpie, you'll be able to read what I'm writing on the paper. No? not showing up yet, huh? I had a marks a lot marker. Now I know. I know this one. I'm going to write with this one so you all can see it very clearly, right? Oh, you're starting to be able to see some words? 
Lauren, one of our eighth graders. I've been writing the names of eighth graders on the wall here, the piece of paper, the whole time. But now you're just starting to be able to see it. Some of those students who maybe, maybe they stand out a little more. No, they all stand out. They all glow. But here's what I really want you guys to think about. Next year, I want you to be this kind of marker. This marker here, when I take the lid off of it, you'll smell it in Norfolk. This is a powerful, big marker. Starting to read that? You see, dear friends in Christ, God wants you to stand out. He wants you to stand out and demonstrate his love in everything that you do. And and I hope you've learned that this year. And we think about what we've been through this last quarter of the school year. We've had to be different. In fact, we've been a lot different. You guys have stepped up to the plate and been learning and growing in ways that we hadn't even imagined you could possibly learn or grow in. And you've learned more of your faith and you've even expressed your faith more. You've seen some of the videos, some of our students sharing their faith in some small ways. And as we go out from this school year, we go out as children of God, boldly proclaiming Jesus in everything we do. Will you pray with me? Lord God, Heavenly Father, We thank you for the love of Jesus in us. Lord God, help us to reflect the light of Jesus in everything we say and do. Let God's light be our witness to the world. In Jesus' name, amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. I thank you, my heavenly Father, Through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have graciously kept me this day, and I pray that you would forgive me all my sins where I have done wrong, and graciously keep me this night. For into your hands I commend myself, my body and soul in all things. Let your holy angel be with me, that the evil foe may have no power over me. Amen. May God the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit Direct our days in his peace. Amen. That concludes our chapel portion of uh, this evening's program. But there will be one more song to come, I think. Um, We thank you all for joining us for the chapel time. Stay tuned for graduation and awards to follow. As we think about our next school year, we look forward to gathering and seeing all of your faces at opening chapel sometime in August. And uh, check back in throughout the summer, seeing the progress on our Building Foundations of Faith project. Uh, The capital campaign kicks off a week from uh, today, May 20th, with a day of activities. We'll have uh, uh, some pledges being collected that day and donations, some challenges for each of our alumni classes, uh, and all kinds of activities all day next Wednesday, May 20th. Look forward to that. Um, You'll see it on all of our social media pages from the church, the school, and the child care as well. Our closing song has been our theme song for this year. Let my light shine bright. When we get to the verses, remember you echo Mr. Whitney. Let my light shine bright tonight, through the day, all the way for you. Yeah. Let my light shine bright through the night, through the day, all the way for you. Yeah. When I fall, you come around. You pick me up from off the ground. And when I'm down, you're always there. My light shine bright through the night, through the day, all the way for you.
Welcome to Awards Night 2020. We appreciate you being here digitally and helping us celebrate some of our students' accomplishments this year. But before we do, we have some very, very special people to acknowledge. It's been a year like no other and our parents and guardians have stepped up in a big way. Your partnerships always key to our students' success because the more that you respect and back up our staff, the more our students in turn respect and back us up and they're able to learn so much more from us that partnership's been taken to a whole new level this year, as many of you likely have taught or proctored or knocked your child upside the head and told them to get back to Google Classroom and watch their teacher's video. Not only that, we've juggled parenting and teaching and working from home all at once, and at some point, you very well have said, I deserve an award for this. Well, you're right, you do. And this is. So congratulations to you. This is our St. John Honorary COVID-19 Teacher-ish Proctor Extraordinaire Award. At this very moment, you're receiving a copy of this award via email. Print this baby off, sign it, frame it, hang it on your bedroom wall, and someday when you think it can't get any worse than this, you can look at this award and be reminded that yes, Yes, it can. It did, and you made it through. So for your diligence and efforts, we commend you, we thank you, and, and congratulations again. Thank you so much for your partnership. We have appreciated it. Um, we couldn't have done it without you. On to the Students' Awards. Our first student awards are to be presented by Pastor Fouts. Now our awards for church attendance from uh, this school year. First, our awards for faithful church attendance. They go to Kyler Onan, Presley Collum, Jonas Carter, Aiden Frydenberg, Mackenzie Collum, Titus Lewis, Avery Onan, Sky Richter, Alexander Schmidt, Jalen Schmidt, Olivia Eckert, Lizzie Fouts, Adam Wysocki, Abby Eckert, Ivy Hack, Sheridan Kirby, Nathaniel Fouts, Nikki Hack, Xander Larson, Brady Trowbridge, Jaden Buckendall, Sophie Humphrey, Seth Kosman, Regan Lewis, Ali Otis Schnorr, Mackenzie Eckert, Tyler Humphrey, Tucker Kirby, Lauren Lutt, and Amber Sherman. And the awards for perfect church attendance for this year go to Carly Knoll, Gavin Richter, Hallie Borchers, Abigail Fouts, Bo Richter, Luke Richter, Brittany Borchers, Blake Borchers, and Cade Larson. Congratulations to our Church Attendance Award winners. Should we do like a power whoosh from the staff or something? I could put it on gallery view and everybody could say Yahtzee or power whoosh or something like that. I don't know how. What does that mean? Okay. One, two, three. Yay! <laughs> Our next award is for perfect school attendance. It's for the first three quarters since we can't count the fourth quarter as being present. Those 
Perfect attendees include Skylar Cole, Silas Lewis, Parker Moore, Ashlyn Smutney, Wyatt Philpott, Presley Cole, Brian Smutney, Jaden Smutney, and Brittany Borchers. Awful lot of Colmes and Smutneys in that group. Uh, good job taking your vitamins this year. Our next award is for Book It, and we'll have the classroom teachers present those awards. Coleman Anderson, Skylar Collum, Silas Lewis, Kyler Onan, Taylor Schnitzler, Ashlyn Smutney, Rowan Wolf. For first grade, we have Grayson Gower, Wyatt Philpott, and Caleb Suckstorf. For third grade, we have Balin Hicks, Ali Schmidt, and Jay Schmidt. Fourth grade, quit chasing after children. You there? She's muted. Is she really? That's glorious. I'm sorry, I wasn't paying attention. We couldn't tell. <laughs> Book it for fourth grade goes to Kiara Moore and Adam Wysocki. Golf clap on three. One, What's two, that? three. Golf clap. What does that mean? Just oh, the baby clap. Oh, okay. Ready? Just, just do this for a while and he'll, he'll edit it anyway. <laughs> I won't see him for three days because he'll be making videos. Mrs. Wilkie, we're missing you. Um, I don't know why. Um, no, I see you. Can you hold your hand with the golf clap? Oh, there we go. <laughs> Hello, St. John family. It's Mrs. Tillman here, your librarian, and I have your Scholastic Reading Counts Award winners. Um, we're going to start with the first grade winner, which they only did their third quarter this year. And our winner for that is Court Richardson. Good job, Court. Next, we're going to do the second through eighth grade winners for their class. For second grade was Ethan Alder. Good job, Ethan. Third grade is Avery Onan. Way to go, Avery. Fourth grade is Olivia Eckert. Good job, Olivia. Uh, fifth grade is Bo Richter. Way to go, Bo. Sixth grade is Jaden Ertster. Good job, Jaden. Seventh grade is Brittany Borchers. All right, Brittany. Eighth grade is Amber Sherman. Then we also have the all around school winner, which can be from any class from uh, second through eighth grade. And our winner this year is Avery Onan. Good job, Avery. He had 379 points this year. So that's an awesome job. Keep it up, Avery. Students, I want you to keep reading and I will see you all next year. Um, power whoosh. One, two, three, whoosh. whoosh. Oh, let's try that again. One, <laughs> two, three, whoosh. whoosh. Um, unmounting oh, yourself. I'm like John Krasinski right now because I have. <laughs> so it's business on the front and party or loungewear at the bottom. I am significantly less businessy than Natasha right now. <laughs> For the spelling bee in third grade, we have Alexander Schmidt and Jalen Schmidt. Fourth grade is Taylor Hall and Ryder Hemingway. Fifth grade is Quentin Eckert and Luke Richter. Sixth grade is Jaden Smutney and Brittley Roggy. Seventh grade is Brittany Borchers and MJ Roggy, and eighth grade is Mackenzie Eckert and Amber Sherman. Oh, there we go. <laughs> Next up, we have our National Geographic Geography B, and Mrs. Wilkie will join us to present those. Grade four, Olivia Eckert, Elizabeth Fouts, Taylor Hall, Ryder Hemingway, Gavin Richter. Grade five, Hallie Borchers, A.J. Miller, Bo Richter, Luke Richter. For grades six, seven, and eight, you'll recognize this little guy. He helped us out finding places. Um, Isaiah Black, uh, Colton Melcher, Jaden Smutney, Brady Trowbridge. Presley Wolf, Righteous Albers, 
Brittany Borchers, Borchers, Reagan, Lewis, MJ, Roggy. Uh, eighth grade, Blake, Borchers, Tucker, Kirby, Mackenzie, Eckert, and Amber Sherman. And I'm pleased to announce in our local, third place was Mackenzie Eckert, second place was Colton Melcher, and first place, and he was so excited about it, Blake Borchers. This one is a pie in the face, and so you say splat. So one, two, three, splat. splat. The winners of the Zayner Blauser Handwriting Awards per grade is Kindergarten, Coleman Anderson, First grade, Caleb Suckstorf. Second grade, Chase Kosman. Third grade, Titus Lewis. Fourth grade, Olivia Eckert. Fifth grade, Abigail Eckert. Sixth grade, Britley Roggy. Seventh grade, Gracie Hitz. And eighth grade, Cade Larson. Congratulations. The firecracker, so you go, Rrr. Oh, no, my, yeah, we do. <laughs> All right, firecracker on three. One, two, three. Miss Wilkie will help present our conservation poster contest honorable mention and winners. We made posters about conservation and they were sent in and these people received honorable mention. Sixth grade, Jada Esner, Carly Frydenberg, J.C. Hassler, um, Marissa Hitz, Xander Larson, and Jaden Smutney. In seventh grade, Izzy Stark, and eighth grade, Tyler Eckerson. Uh, then for fourth through sixth grade, Colton Melcher won first place at the regional level, went on and won at the state level, and he was uh, his poster was given and shown at um, the national level. Second place, fourth through sixth grade, Brittany Roggy. First place, seventh through eighth grade, Brittany Borchers. Second place, seventh through eighth grade, Tyler Humphrey. And third place, seventh and eighth grade, Sophie Humphrey. Congratulations to them. Yay! <laughs> Up next, we have our Commendable Physical Fitness Awards. Uh, for this, they have to score in the 50th percentile nationally for pull-ups, the mile run, sit-ups, the sit and reach, and the shuttle run. So flexibility, endurance, strength, speed, and agility are measured. They had to be in the 50th percentile for all five of those categories. In second grade, Daisy Hutman, Kiana Moore, Nixon Utchin, Wyatt Wessel. For third grade, we have Jonas Carter, Aislinn Dredla, Ginger Hutman, Avery Onan, Allie Schmidt, and Harley Wolken. Fourth grade, none. <laughs> That's definitely Please making don't. the cut. That's definitely. Don't put that. <laughs> I just wanted to prove that I was paying attention this time. <laughs> hey, plus. Uh, fifth grade, Hallie Borchers, Grace Herman, and Sheridan Kirby. In sixth grade, we have Carly Freudenberg. Ah, I said it wrong. I've <laughs> known her. <laughs> retry, retry. I know how to say these names. I'm just nervous. Look at my hands. They're shaking. <laughs> In sixth grade. Oh, the lighting's not right. Hold on. <laughs> <laughs> they're going to remember me and they're going to play it at my funeral. <laughs> <laughs> Carly, Marissa, Jaden, Brilliant. Rolling, three, two, one. In sixth grade, we have Carly Frydenberg, Marissa Hitz, right? Jaden Smutney and Brittley Raggi. Seventh grade, Brittany Borchers, Jaden Buckendall, Regan Lewis, and MJ Raggi. Eighth grade, Blake Borchers, Tyler Humphrey, Lauren Lutt, and Amber Sherman. Our next awards for outstanding physical fitness. This is for students who are in the 85th percentile for all five of those same categories. Sixth grade, have Xander Larson. And in seventh grade, Sophie Humphrey. Woo -hoosh. Third quarter, A honor roll. Brittany Borchers, Jaden Buckendall, Abby Erickson, 
Sophie Humphrey, Seth Kosman, Reagan Lewis, MJ Roggy, Blake Borgers, Lauren Lutt, Amber Sherman. Third Quarter B Honor Roll, Dawson Amick, Holly Anderson, Gracie Hitz, Cade Larson, Tyler Erickson, Tucker Kirby. This is the B Average Honorable Mention for the school year in fourth grade. Abby Amick, Lizzie Fouts, Ryder Hemingway, and Gus Richardson. In fifth grade, Emily Anderson, Quinton Eckert, Abigail Fouts, Grace Herman, Mazzy Kuhar, and Ashlyn Wolken. In sixth grade, Isaiah Blyke, Jaden Ernstner, J.C. Hassler. In seventh grade, Dawson Amick and Gracie Hitz. And in eighth grade, Ty Erickson, Tucker Kirby, and Kate Larson. Here ends B average honorable mention for the school year. For A average honor roll this year, we have in fourth grade, Kaylee Blaine, Olivia Eckert, Taylor Hall, Gavin Richter, and Adam Wysocki. In fifth grade, we have Hallie Borchers, Abby Eckert, Sheridan Kirby, AJ Miller, Bo Richter, and Luke Richter. In sixth grade, we have Carly Freudenberg, Marissa Hitz, Xander Larson, Jaden Smutney, and Brittley Roggy. In seventh grade, we have Brittany Borchers, Jaden Buckendall, Abby Erickson, Sophie Humphrey, and Seth Kosman, and Reagan Lewis. There was a space there. In eighth grade, we have Blake Borchers, Lauren Lutt, and Amber Sherman. Congratulations. Woo -hoo. Hello, St. John. This is Mr. Whitney here to present the award for Outstanding Student in Music for this, the 2019-2020 school year. This year, our Outstanding Student Award recipient goes to someone who has been involved in band, in handbells, in the school musical, and even in music class has all of her friends asking Mr. Whitney to play the piano. This year, the Outstanding Student in Music Award goes to none other than Miss Amber Sherman. Congratulations, Amber. May you always make music for the joy of the Lord. Woo -hoo. The salutatorian for the 2019-2020 school year is Amber Sherman. The valedictorian for the 2019-2020 school year is Lauren Lott. Yay! <laughs> Our last few awards tonight, I'd like to acknowledge a few teachers who won't be with us again uh, next year. Uh, the first of whom is Miss Kirby. And Miss Kirby, I have quite a few things that I could come up with uh, for her. A lot of things came to mind with how, how we could um, recognize her. Um, one that has continually come up was the Ex-Girlfriend Award. And I'd, I'd love to do that because uh, when we first called her, she actually told us no. And then she called us back up and said, Hey, I think I made a mistake. Will you please reconsider me? And we did. And the rest is history. And so we got to be with her for uh, another three years until she ultimately told us no again and broke up with us and broke our hearts and moved on to go be with her husband in Genoa. I'd like to give her that award, but I don't know if it's quite appropriate. So I'll pretend like I didn't say that. Instead, I'd like to concentrate on something positive and impact that she had on our school. And the biggest thing that stood out is her, the way that she interacts with her students, the way she gets them to work out their own issues. And our whole staff has taken notice and adopted this PBIS mentality and philosophy for our whole school. And so I would like to award Miss Kirby the Child Charmer Award. Woo -hoo! Next up, I have Mrs. Wilkie, and whether you know it or not, Mrs. Wilkie really bailed us out this year. Uh, we didn't even contact her till late July, um, and August really is when she, she took the job. So thank you to Mrs. Wilkie for bailing us out, but also she was in retirement, and when I retire, I am off in the sunset. Uh, don't contact me. I will be long gone someday. 
Um, but she put that aside and came and helped us out and that was awesome. But not only that, but she also has great science knowledge and she also traveled like 30 miles each way for us from Osmond every day. So for those reasons, I would like to award her the Wiseman Award for her extensive knowledge in science and for traveling from afar. Whoosh. So last year when Mr. Hart retired, we threw him a retirement party. He got some awards. We made a big deal out of it and he hated it all. He doesn't like the attention so much. So when I talked to him in August and talked to him about coming back for one more year, I told him, you know, we won't throw a party again. I'll stay away from the awards. Over the course of the year, there are a few times when Mr. Hart would, would make jokes about things that he didn't really want to do. And he'd say, what are they going to do? Fire me? So I guess this being the last two days of Mr. Hart's time with us here, I guess I would tell him, what's he going to do? Quit? So Mr. Hart is a, a teaching legend last year we established. And after coming out of retirement, he's also a Green Bay Packer fan. I could think of no better award for him than the re-retired legend. So congratulations, Mr. Hart. Thank you for joining us tonight. Thank you for staying with us this long. And if you've made it this far, uh, we have a few outtakes and then graduation. Stay with us for that after the outtakes. Do you want me to do it now? No. Okay. No. Real. No. Just kidding. Anytime. <laughs> <laughs> Real quick. <laughs> Sherry, here we go. For real, it's gonna work this time. The Oscar goes to Carly Frotenberg. Fry, fry, sorry. Can I start that again? <laughs> you bet I can splice it in. Or I can okay. leave because it's kind of fun. <laughs> <laughs> I was thinking like the same thing. Absolutely. Agility, shuttle run, the mile, and. Skylar Combe. Time out. Time out. Start again. I had a mountain up there. He must have been saying something in the background. Try again. Coleman Anderson. Come Skylar on. I keep on getting the mountain. I'm going to mute Jim. That's it, Jim. You're too noisy. Say it fast. <laughs> All right. Our, out Our next award is for a word. This is I... Zoom Uncensored. It's going to get a thousand hits. <laughs>So welcome first. Thanks for coming. Thanks for joining us. I know this isn't ideal. This isn't the way that we wanted to do things either. Uh, but we did want to rec recognize our graduates um, and congratulate them in a timely manner. So um, we can't have all of the elements of graduation without everyone here. But uh, Mr. Whitney did record the processional music for us. So we'll start with that and then we'll go to Amber with the opening prayer. <laughs>
Thank you, Mr. Whitney. Uh, the next part of our ceremony tonight uh, is our salutatorian, Amber Sherman, has our opening prayer. Please pray with me. Heavenly Father, thank you that we are able to gather together over Zoom. Please be with anyone that has been affected by this pandemic and continue to keep everyone in your care. Help us to put to good use all the knowledge, skills, and life lessons we've learned at St. John. Most importantly, as we face unknown challenges moving forward, help us to stay strong in our faith and to trust you in all that we do. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Um, I wanted to do a very brief introduction of our class. I don't know if this looks familiar to many of you. Um, seven of our nine graduates are in this picture. Uh, Maverick Hegman was a part of this class up until seventh grade and he transferred to Elkhorn Valley. Uh, but this, this was my first class um, in kindergarten when I moved here. And so this is the first one I've got to see go all the way through. And it's been awesome watching them grow up to this point. Um, but I did find a relic that I wanted to share before we talk too much about where they are right now. I wanted to look back real briefly. Jesus to give you forgiveness and joy. In those days, Caesar Augustus issued a decree that is sent to the people who are from the world. This was the first census that took place while Quirinius was governor of Syria. So everyone in his own town to wear his suit. Joseph also came from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea to Bethlehem, the town of David. But he belonged to the line of David. He went there to wipe his sword clearly, who was pledged to be married.
right then that, that was a, a pretty special class they had that entire thing memorized just really impressive for a bunch of little kindergartners um, and then obviously that was seven of the nine and then we're blessed to have those two young guys join us uh, in fourth and fifth grade Ty Erickson and Jacob Anderson joined us I don't have a cute video of, of them though I'm sorry guys um, and that is our class. All of our graduates have uh, completed all the required coursework. Um, and we're sorry to see them go, but we are going to ask Mr. Hart if he would read off our graduates. Uh, we do have your diplomas already here. You'll be able to pick them up tomorrow at the Great Exchange, but Mr. Hart will do the presentation tonight. Jacob Duane Anderson. Blake Joseph Orchards, Mackenzie Lynn Eckert, Tyler Erickson, Tyler Lauren Humphrey, Tucker Joseph Daniel Kirby, Cade R. Larson, Lauren Nicole Lutt, Amber Sherman. Thank you, Mr. Hart. If I can figure out how to unmute everyone. Let's see. Yep, yep, not gonna happen. It's in there somewhere. I'm too new to this. Uh, if you are unmuted, there's gotta be an option somewhere. Nope. Would you join me in clapping for our, uh, for our graduates? <laughs> And I wish I knew how to do this better. I apologize, I, I don't. Um, I'd love to pull up the pictures of the different graduates as, as I'm going through this every year. I, I reflect back on, on the graduates as eighth graders and I try to come up with something that stands out to me. And it doesn't by any means define them because they have so many traits that I'm not gonna talk about. But I usually pick like one thing that sticks out to me as a, as a memory or a character trait or something. And I like to share that in the form of an award. So Jacob, could you give me like a, could you say like, hey there or something for me? So your picture pull, pulls up. I don't know how to do it any other way. You there, Jacob? He's outsmarted me. <laughs> there he is all right i see him i don't know if you guys see him but i see him uh so jacob's the first one i have on the list it's it's kind of the nature of the beast when you are alphabetically an a in the alphabet that's kind of the way it goes um jacob is an awesome kid um he's extremely easygoing the first thing that i thought of with jacob was how many times i've seen him go sure okay why not? Sure. And I thought about giving Jacob like a, a sure award. I thought that was too boring. I didn't think that really encapsulated all of who Jacob is. And so I thought a little harder and I thought about how 
Uh, Jacob was the chapel partner for my middle son, Kyler, for at least a year, if not more. It seemed like a long time, but the two got along really well together. Kyler loved him, and you could tell that Jacob was a big brother. And so the next thing I thought of was Jacob with kids. Um, and the first thing that came into my mind, and again, I'm just sharing kind of my thought process so you can see how I get to these awards, was who is someone with a lot of kids? And I came up with something that didn't fit at all. It's like, there's an old woman who lived in a shoe and I didn't remember the full nursery rhyme. So I went through it and it's like, no, Jacob's not a woman. That doesn't work. And then I actually read the rhyme that talks about, she sent them to bed without food and she whipped them. It's like, no, 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 no. This is getting off. This is not what I want. This is not Jacob. Jacob's great with kids. And so what I came up with that I thought fit Jacob much better was the Mr. Rogers big brother award because he's a big brother to all the kids he's great with kids so congratulations jacob you get the big brother mr rogers big brother award for being an awesome older siblings sibling to all the younger kids and i have no noise and no feedback at all can i have you clap please jacob Um, next up on my list alphabetically is Mr. Borchers. Um, Blake is a fun, talented kid. Um, and there was one thing that stuck out in my head right away. Um, even though I've had him for a really long time and that was PE, he likes to mess around in PE and I need Blake to pop up here. How can I get Blake back? He was there a second ago. Blake. <laughs> There he is. Thanks, Blake. Appreciate you being a good sport. We'll get this over with quickly, right? Yeah. Um, so in PE, Blake uh, would always get changed rather quickly. He'd come out and he would do all sorts of uh, goofy shots, trick shots, where he'd throw it up from behind the back course, <laughs> cast him across the gym. And to give you a little piece of this, Thank, uh, thank the Lord for security cameras, right, Blake? Because now everybody is going to get to see Blake's magical moments here. Blake is right here in the center by the center court. First of all, this is a good catch. Impressive. And watch the hoop closest. Not bad, right? Not bad. Football. But wait, there's more. I see. Grabs it, chucks it up again, and it swooshes on the far hoop. You've got to be kidding me for that. <laughs> uh, and for all the other goofy shots that I saw him taking throughout his time, uh, Blake, you get the trick shot <laughs> award. Blake, the trick shot borchers award. Um, if you've ever seen his dad play basketball, obviously you, you know that he must get his basketball <laughs> skills from his mom. So, <laughs> no clapping, come on, clap for me. Uh, Mackenzie Eckert is next up on the list. Mackenzie is a sweet girl. She is a talented girl. Is Mackenzie here? I saw her check in earlier, right? Yeah. Mackenzie, can I get a hello from you? Hi. So don't have her up on my screen. Mackenzie. Hi. There? Hi. <laughs> One more time, Mackenzie. Hi. <laughs> and this is terribly ironic, actually, because Mackenzie, you're not pulling up on my screen. There we are. Hi, Mackenzie. All right. So that's ironic because actually I was going to talk about how Mackenzie's least favorite thing probably is to be in front of everybody else. She's a very sweet girl. She's a pretty meek girl. And the worst thing that somebody can do if, if, if they are shy is have somebody talk about them being shy. So I'm not going to talk about Mackenzie being shy. Not going there. But I will say she is a fairly meek individual. So what stood out the most for me uh, is a memory of the first time Mackenzie was going to present in my class. And I remember thinking, this is going to be painful. She is going to want to go crawl in a hole. She's not going to want to be there. 
and she walked up to the front of the class class and all of a sudden there was this bold powerful confident woman that presented and it was like where did this come from she is a performer and it blew my socks off from the moment she started all the way through she had my attention she captivated her classmates attention she didn't let go the whole time and i wish we would have been able to see that with the musical this spring um, but throughout that time in fifth grade all the way it was like mackenzie has got a whole nother gear that i never even knew about so mackenzie for that I am giving you the here I am award because I found out exactly where you are from that moment on Mackenzie. Uh, help me recognize Mackenzie. Um, next up I have Ty Erickson. And again, kind of similar situation. Ty, are you out there somewhere? I don't know if I saw Ty check in. Ty, are you there? We'll go ahead and talk to Ty anyway. This is recording, so we'll, we'll just make sure he sees it. Uh, Ty, again, is one that there are some kids that you never know what they're thinking because if it comes in their brain, it comes out their mouth. Ty is not one of those kids. He has a very good filter. He's a pretty quiet individual. Um, but I always knew that there was a lot more going on up there than what he was telling everybody. He had a lot to share. And I saw that demonstrated an awful lot this year with some of the assignments. And I'm going to pull up one of his assignments. He's not going to mind because apparently he's not here. <laughs> um, I'll let his words describe it instead of me. So they had an assignment to write a letter to their future self about keeping the faith. So Ty wrote, dear future self, there are some things I want to tell you that I think are very important. God is great. Remember to praise God every day. God is good. He is your rock. He is the savior of the world. Our school shirt for the year is God's light, our witness. God is the light that draws us toward him. God is easier to talk to than most people. So talk to him daily. God sent his only son to pay for our sins. God is amazing. He loves you. Keep studying God's word. There's so much to learn. Always put God first. You need to study the word to understand your faith, to learn what God has said to you, and to grow in the Lord. You need to read the Bible every day and have direction and know, to know God's will. Stay focused on the word. Don't let life, money, fame, your sinful way get in the way of true happiness. Don't let your problems get you down. Go to God for help. There are many things you can do to stay focused on his word. Read the Bible every day. Wake up 15 minutes earlier to read the Bible before starting your day. You'll need the spiritual nourishment to give you wisdom and guidance. Listen to songs or programs about God's word on the way to where you're going. Never be lazy. Look for something every day to thank God for. What if you only had the things you thanked God for? What would you have? Always grow in knowledge and understanding of your faith, then put your knowledge into practice. My goal for you is to stay strong. Don't conform to the world you live in. Begin each day in prayer. Turn to God first, not last. Be teachable. Seek wisdom. Be the kind of friend you'd like to have. Prioritize your life. Put Jesus first. Be a servant for Jesus. Be more like Jesus. Always be thankful, even in the hard times. Keep the faith. Um, again, a lot of times you know there's something inside and they don't always get to share it with Ty, holy moly. This is something where our staff reads devotions every morning and this is something that I shared with the staff as a devotion, didn't tell them who wrote it until afterwards. But Ty knocked my socks off. I hope he uh, continues to share what's inside of him and I could see him being a Christian author someday and for that reason I'm giving Ty the Written Reverend Award. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Onan. Yes. Sorry to interrupt, but Ty is trying to get on. I don't know if you got a notification. Give me a second. Let me see if he's in the waiting room. I don't get notifications when there's somebody in there. Oh, there he is. 
Welcome, Ty. Ty, you're on mute and we don't have your video, but I don't want to disappoint you. You missed the most embarrassing part where I just talked a whole lot about you. Uh, we're going to keep moving, but um, this is recording, and so we'll make sure that, that you get an opportunity to see that. Okay. All right. Go back to my screen share. Maybe. So I, I don't want to be a uh, spoiler alert. Uh, this was your award, though, for your ama amazing writing skills. And I'll let you listen uh, to the video a little more later for why I chose to give you the written reverend award. All right. <laughs> Tyler Humphrey is up next. Um, Tyler, again, sweet girl, talented girl, athletic girl, wears her heart on her sleeve. Um, one of the things that stands out there is during the fourth quarter, one of the teachers was talking with the eighth graders and said, what do you miss the most? What are you the most disappointed about with the fourth quarter? And I was told Tyler said, well, I don't get to be a leader at St. John anymore. And it was a knife through the heart for that uh, feeling for Tyler. But also that's something that we preach on all the time is, our eighth graders are leaders and their role models. And this class has been an amazing set of leaders all the way across the board. Um, but Tyler, um, eighth grade, yes, but you're just starting being a leader because um, you might be the youngest next year, but your heart and your drive. Um, people are going to follow you. You do a great job. So um, I lost my notes. <laughs> Tyler is one that if you were in a huddle and you're losing the game, you would want her giving the, the pep rally speech for the team. And this is, uh, Tyler, you would be most likely to inspire a Hallmark movie inspirational pep talk. <laughs> Good. Hey. Congratulations, Tyler. <laughs> Tucker Kirby is up oh, next. Um, another awesome kid. Again, this class is full of awesome kids. Tucker dances to the beat of his own drum. Tucker, are you out there? Can you make some noise for me? Hi. <laughs> All right. Still didn't get you up on my screen. Hello. Oh, I had him. Hello, Tucker. Uh, Tucker, the, the big thing that stands out with Tucker, again, these kids are so talented in so many different ways that um, it's hard to pick one thing out. But with Tucker, this stuck out because he's not afraid to stand out. Um, if I were a junior high student, I would not have the guts to go play football for a team that my classmates were playing for a different team. I wouldn't have the guts to do that. Tucker is the first eighth grader that we've ever had who has played for the Lutheran High Junior Eagles. And whether you like that or not, and you miss him not playing with the other team, like you gotta respect the kid that takes guts. And that's just kind of who Tucker is. He does what is right what he feels is right and he doesn't care who's who's opposed to it um and that's an awesome trait and tucker i don't know if you've seen the wizard of oz in the wizard of oz there is a cowardly line and in the end he is a courageous lion well you've skipped over all the cowardly stages and tucker you get the courageous lion award <laughs> <laughs> Next up, we have Cade Larson. Again, talented kid, athletic kid, smart kid. 
Um, he has a strong conscience that I hope never fades away. And he's proven that over and over again at his time at St. John. And that's awesome. And I hope that sticks with him uh, there again. It's, it's hard to narrow down things for students. And with this, I had to phone a friend and say, Hey, I'm having a hard time narrowing some things down. Uh, how can you help me here? And we talked it over a little bit and we, we did agree that his innovativeness, his creativity is something that stands out. He doesn't always choose to use it depending on how motivated he is with the project, but when he does, he'll knock your socks off. So this is a, a pretty poor example, um, but it, during the fourth quarter of his eighth grade year, Cade, can you remember back the fourth quarter of your eighth grade year? No. <laughs> fourth quarter of his eighth grade year in PE class, uh, out walking with his mom, um, he was getting a lot of exercise on something like this <laughs> and his innovation was a showstopper for me and anybody else near around my household as he came up with some kind of device did you create that thing on three wheels nope nope it was it was very impressive um but while exercising we we thought this is this is really creative way to get time with mom to still uh, be out on his walk during fourth quarter PE class. Small example of the creativity. Um, Cade, I'm giving you the Henry Ford Creativity <laughs> Award. <laughs> Almost there. We have two left. Small class. Lauren, hi Lauren. Lauren's on the screen already for me. Uh, Lauren Lutt, um, I, I'm a broken record here saying smart, talented, all these things. Lauren um, is our valedictorian this year. She got to be the voice on many of my videos when she uh, was just real little and had that cute little baby voice. And um, she's grown up. She's a smart, awesome kid. Um, she also is very witty. And I imagine it served her very well as a youngest child, uh, using things to, to get her way on occasion. So <laughs> there's an example that I can give you where we were in class a few months ago and I don't remember what she asked to do. It was to go somewhere to do something. I said, no, what makes you think you can do that? And she said, well, eighth grade privileges. <laughs> said, what? She said, well, eighth grade privileges. I said, there's no such thing as eighth grade privileges. What are you talking about? And she said, well, you know how you always talk about eighth graders are more responsible. And as we show responsibility, we get more privileges. That's eighth grade privileges. So she turned around my words to get what she wanted. And it was like, take my money, Lauren. You're a salesman. You win. Go do whatever you asked for. So Lauren, for that reason and for others, you get the, I could sell a ketchup popsicle to a woman in white clothes. <laughs> <laughs> Lauren's very smart, very witty. It will serve her well. Um, good job, Lauren. Um, last one is Amber Sherman. Amber's popped up on my screen a few times. Amber, you still there? Yeah. <laughs> All right, I'm going to have to switch my cameras. We'll find it. There you are. Hi, Amber. Um, again, smart, athletic, this is a great class. Uh, and actually she and Lauren made a great team with a lot of projects. I paired them up just randomly for a project a couple of years ago. And I wish I put the video on here, but it's kind of long. So I did not, I did not. Um, of those two working together, I think you guys did Rebops, is that right? Hilarious yeah. video. And so intentionally from there on for a while, I may have paired them up because I knew that when I went to grade papers, then I would be entertained for, for that one and it would be an enjoyable experience because they did a great job. Um, that's part of what I'm gonna talk about. Um, she is a model student. And of course, I was of course a model student in college. I bought all my books, I showed up early, I did all the homework. And Mrs. Onan is not on here to verify, so that's probably a good thing. <laughs> Um, so hypothetically speaking, 
if I were in college and I say didn't buy a book and I showed up late and I didn't really prepare very well for class, hypothetically, I would probably sneak into the back of the class and sit down and wait for someone really smart to talk. And after that person talked, answered the professor's question, I would probably sit and wait a minute and then modify what they said slightly, put it in my own words, raise my hand and say the exact same thing they just said to make the professor think that I was smart. Amber, hypothetically, you are that smart girl. Hypothetically, if we we're in college together, I totally would have sat behind you, waited for you to talk, and then tried to copy whatever you just said because you are that smart girl that does uh, everything to an excellent degree, uh, projects or otherwise. So Amber, I'm giving you the Watch and Learn Award. <laughs> Help me congratulate Andrew. Where are you going, Ambrose? <laughs> um, those are our, um, our graduates for this year. Awesome class, we'll miss you guys. Um, as a teacher, I think every teacher has those moments where they want to bang their head against a cement wall and say, what am I doing? Is anybody paying attention? And then every once in a while you get a class like this and it's like, that's why I do it because they get it and uh and when they leave it's like you know they they probably could have taught it just as well as i did if not better by the time they go so thank you very much class of 2020 you guys have been awesome um and we wish you luck as you move on lauren would you please close us in prayer please join me in prayer dear heavenly father at the end of our school year we give thanks for all the blessings you have given us we see your love all around us. You have blessed us with our family, parents, friends, and teachers. They have cared for us, encouraged us, and taught us throughout our lives, helping us grow in knowledge and faith. Lord, thank you for being us as we celebrate the past school year and our achievements, and also as we honor the eighth grade graduates of St. John. May you continue to be with us and guide us every day. Please be with us during this COVID-19 pandemic and keep everyone safe. Please help those who have the virus and help them recover. In your name we pray, amen. amen. Um, this video along with our, our awards night and closing chapel will be posted starting at 6.30 tomorrow night on our Facebook page. Um, if you don't have Facebook and would still like a copy of any of those things, just contact the school office, let us know. Um, otherwise, help me congratulate our graduates one last time. Thank you very much for joining us. Have a good night.